Hello, and welcome to Bruce City Sense Top 10 Horror Films. Bringing you the best of the worst. Uh, or is it the worst of the best? Now, just to be clear, this is not a top 10 greatest of all time list. This is not a top scariest of all time. How's your head? I haven't had any complaints yet. This is just a top 10 of my personal favorite horror films. That gal with the enormous uh, ratings. So let's get this list going. Number 10, Candyman. I came for you. Do I know you? Candyman was released on October 16th, 1992. It's about a supernatural being who has a hook for a hand and murders anyone who summons him. No, we're not talking about Dr. Anal Hook, guys. The Candyman can be summoned by staring into a mirror and saying the name Candyman five times. Candyman. Candyman? Candyman. Just a ghost story. Candyman. Although some people do seem to get the number confused with other urban legends, like uh, in these Tupac lyrics, for example. Say my name three times like Candyman. Bet I roll on your ass like an avalanche. Have you ever heard of Candyman? So that's my number 10 for favorite horror films. Did you guys enjoy the Candyman? Would you put it in your top 10? He's lying on the floor in a pool of blood, holding himself. <laughs> they found it floating in a toilet. Number 9, The Blair Witch Project. Now, some of you might not agree with me on this one, but I think this deserves to be in the top. It was the first of its kind, and holy shit was it scary when it came out. The Blair Witch Project was released on July 30th, 1999. I was just shy of 11 years old at the time, and that movie was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It was fucking amazing. The film was made to look like a real documentary that was shot by three film students who go missing after searching for the legend of the Blair Witch in a Maryland forest. I remember when this movie came out, a lot of people were complaining about the unstableness of the cameras and how it was making them sick, and they couldn't even finish the movie. A lot of people even walked out of the movie theater because of it. Uh, some said it was the worst movie ever made, but others, like myself, fucking loved the film. Like, I, and I was genuinely scared watching it. Like, I think for me, the creepiest part of the entire movie was the ending. Like, seeing them all standing in the corner like that is fucking creepy and disturbing. And I, like, freaked out when I seen that shit. But yeah, so after the film's release, uh, tourists would flock to Burkittsville, Maryland to look for the Blair Witch. Uh, some residents started locking their doors for the first time, and some even found pictures of their family and children on Blair Witch websites. Um, so, like, people would just randomly flock in from other places to go and look for the Blair Witch or for Coffin Rock, and people would get pissed. They'd come out there looking for hours and wouldn't find anything, and it's like, yeah, because it's a movie, dude. <laughs> it's not real. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Would you put it in your top ten? I, I definitely think it deserves to be in the top 10. It was a good movie. Strictly all fiction. I've been here 35 years, my husband 50 years, and, and we know people throughout the community who's been here 75, 80 years, and no one has ever heard of any missing children, no Blair Witch. You know, all the places um, elaborated on in the movie are not here. Number eight, Children of the Corn. Children of the Corn was released on March 9th, 1984. The film is about a young couple whose car breaks down in a rural town. They are soon trapped by a religious cult of bears that want to squirt gravy all over the... Wait, wrong cult. My bad. Just because some self-proclaimed holy man said this is what God commands? I can't believe you're this blind. Soon trapped by a religious cult of homicidal children who worship a demonic force in the cornfield. If, you, if you're ever in Wisconsin, take a drive through Scandinavia and tell me that you don't get some weird, creepy fucking Children of the Corn vibe. I'm just saying. Number seven, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Killer Clowns from outer space. Holy shit. 
shit. Kill the Clowns from Outer Space was released on May 27th, 1988. The story is about aliens who look like circus clowns invading a small town. Something funny is happening around here. The clowns use circus acts to trick people, and then they trap them inside of cotton candy cocoons until they're ready for harvesting. Well, it's gonna take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge, so fuck you! Over. Popcorn guns, ice cream acid, sucking blood through straws, and if you really enjoy it, cheesy horror films or comedy horror, check out Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It is a great fucking film. Come on, cocoons, popcorn guns, monster shadows, woo. I mean, what do you think we are? Yeah, we're not as stupid as we look. <laughs> Number six, urban legend. Gang members drive around at night with their headlights off, and when someone goes to flash from their high beams to warn them, they kill them. Urban Legend was released on September 25th, 1998. It tells the story of a group of college kids in New England. They learn of an urban legend that states a psych professor murdered six students on campus just 25 years prior. More specific. This is what we call an urban legend. Contemporary folklore passed on as a true story. A killing spree begins. The kids try desperately to survive and figure out who the killer is. A guy and a girl, and they're parked out in the woods. The guy steps out, and the girl starts to hear these scratching noises. It's her dead boyfriend hung from a tree. Uh, Robert Englund is also in it. He uh, played the original Freddy Krueger. So uh, let me know in the comments if it would make your top ten. <laughs> Isn't there another story about a guy with an axe hiding in a woman's back seat? My mom still checks the back seat before getting into a car. Number five, Leprechaun 3. He's just another gnome full of stuff. <laughs> nope. Leprechaun 3 was released on June 27th, 1995. It's the third installment of the Leprechaun series. There are a total of eight movies all together. He's got be shilling! He's got be shilling! Not knowing the evil he would unleash, a Las Vegas pawn shop owner removed a medallion from a leprechaun statue. Whatever you do, don't touch the medallion. Legend says that it was Casey. Before you can say, A friend with weed is a friend indeed. The evil leprechaun was set free and began his spree of mischief and murder in search of his shillings. I'm a leprechaun, me lad, and you're a greedy thief. For trying to steal me gold, I'll be giving you some grief. This was my favorite of the leprechaun movies. Like, it was just awesome. Though, I don't know if it was just the excitement of Vegas, like all the lights and stuff made it kind of cool to look at. And then you got the freaking robot lady that comes out of the TV and the magic show. And I don't know, it was just all around. I thought it was a great leprechaun movie. Let me know if you guys liked it and if it would make your top 10. Those shoes, uh, do they come in blue suede? I, I really like them, man. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Number four, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. I think it's safe to say that everyone's heard Freddy Krueger, you know, that serial killer who was burned alive and now attacks children through their dreams. Every town has an Elm Street. <laughs> Freddy's Dead was my favorite of the Nightmare on Elm Street films. It was released on September 13th, 1991, and is the sixth installment of the Nightmare on Elm Street series. There are nine total films to date. Hurry up, boy. You don't want to miss the fuss. <laughs> a teenager with amnesia finds himself searching for clues of his past with a woman who works for a local teen runaway shelter. During their search, they become the prey of Freddy Krueger, and they learn she is actually Freddy's daughter. A big fight scene happens at the end, and Freddy is destroyed forever. Or at least until number seven comes out. Cool. The coolest thing about this movie is that it was originally presented in 3D. I don't know if you guys know that. I remember watching this movie as a kid with the cardboard 3D glasses, and it was just amazing and terrifying. <laughs> so what do you think? Would you add it to your list? What's your favorite Freddy movie? Let me know in the comments. Kung Fu 
this, bitch. Number three, The Craft. The Craft was released on May 3rd, 1996. It tells the story of four Catholic prep high school girls who practice the art of Wicca. We are the weirdos, mister. Battling their own internal demons, they find that they can improve their lives by casting spells. What starts off as harmless fun soon turns dark when the girls begin to feel unstoppable with their newfound powers. How do you enter? With perfect love and perfect trust. The Craft is one of my favorite films of all time. Would it make your list? I got clean towels for everyone. Ah! Oh, my butt. What, what's going on in here? Nothing. Why? Are you girls getting hot? No, Mom. <laughs> Number two, the people under the stairs. Remember when we got it out of this place? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> this is another great Wes Craven film right here. The People Under the Stairs was released on November 1st, 1991. It tells the story of a young boy from the ghetto whose mother is dying from cancer. After finding a treasure map, his sister's boyfriend devises a plan to break into the landlord's house to steal a coin collection. But once inside, they quickly realize they may never get out. Listen, Leroy. This breaking an interim might not be so smart. <clears throat> I mean, it's the first day of my 13th birthday. Could be unlucky. 13th birthday is unlucky anyway. Too old to get tit, too young to get ass. You're lucky I'm teaching you a trade, kid. Ain't no door stands up to sleep. I done busted this house's cherry. It's open right up now. Following generations of inbreeding and increasing madness, the landlords begin hunting the men inside of their soundproof home. The young boy discovers not only are these people brother and sister, they're also baby snatchers, punishing each child one by one for hearing, seeing, or speaking evil. Children misbehaving in the basement and one in the wall. Doing his business, God knows where. You kids will be the death of me. The kids have had their ears cut off and their tongues cut out, and they're all locked away, right under the stairs. He doesn't talk much, does he? His tongue's cut out. Oh, man. What did you think of this movie? Would it make your top 10? I'm tired of fucking around, so either put the gun down now, or kiss your ass goodbye, boy. All right, now for the moment you've all been waiting for. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, just, just got her period. Who said her period? Number one, Carrie. Do it! Do it! Released on November 16th, 1976, Carrie still holds up as one of the scariest films of all time. People have tried to remake the film several times, and it always fails miserably compared to the original. No one can outdo Piper Laurie's incredible performance in this film. I love you, Mama. Thou shalt not suffer which to live. The story is about an outcast named Carrie White, who is sheltered by her overbearing religious mother. After constant harassment from other kids in school, Carrie starts to discover that she has telekinetic powers. Telekinesis, thought to be the ability to move or to cause changes in objects by force of the mind. After being pressured by the gym teacher, a fellow classmate invites Carrie to the senior prom. Hi, Carrie. Hi. And first sin was intercourse. First sin was intercourse. I didn't sin, Mama. No. Say it. I didn't sin, Mama. First sin was intercourse. And first sin was intercourse. And first sin was intercourse. And the first sin was intercourse, Mama. I was so scared. I thought I was done. And the girls, they all laughed at me and threw things at me. 
And Eve was weak. Seth. No, Mama. Eve was weak. No. Eve was weak. No. Eve was weak. Say it. No, Mama. Say it. Eve was weak. Eve was weak. The night seems to be a mystical dream, and Carrie is on top of the world. But after being humiliated in front of the entire school, Carrie decides she's had enough and takes her revenge using her newfound telekinetic powers. This movie scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I was, the first time I seen it, I was watching it with my mom and she waited till the very end when Carrie's hand reaches up out of the grave, out of the grave and grabs Sue by her arm. My mom fucking waited till the very end and grabbed me and I screamed like a bitch and ran upstairs, man. I was so pissed, but I still love that movie. Like, it doesn't scare me anymore, obviously. It's just a great movie to watch. Everything about this movie was fucking amazing. I don't think they could have done a better job at all. Uh, John Travolta's also in it. Um, Sissy Spacek, she did a great job in the movie. Um, the music in the original movie is what set the mood. I think that's one of the biggest issues they have with trying to remake this movie, is the music. Come on downstairs. Mom? Who was that? Called. Like, the music they used is what gave it, gave it that creep level that you needed to set the mood for the movie. Like, you, you can't fucking do this movie without that, that music and that performance from Piper Laurie. Like, oh my god, and the, the architecture inside of Carrie's house and everything with the, you know, the angles and stuff and all the arches and the way it was shot. Like, all of that together is what made this a great fucking film. You can't just decide one day, oh, I'm just gonna remake it and it's gonna be great. Like, no, <laughs> you can't. You guys fucking failed miserably on every single Carrie remake that has ever came out. So please just stop. Oh, oh, you can't get out for this, you bitch! What the world? I'm gonna knock you down, do you understand me? But anyways, thanks for watching. I, uh... Hope you enjoyed my top 10 list. Let me know in the comments what your top 10 would be. Not the top 10 scariest, just your personal top 10 favorite horror films. And I can't wait to see your answers. Cause I fucking love Halloween and spooky stuff. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see what you guys watch. Much love, everyone. Stay spooky. Well, that's our show. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did. <laughs> oh boy, I mean, could you believe that cheesy looking monster? Looked like Gumby on steroids. And uh, don't forget, next week it's the head with two things. I mean, the thing with two heads. The gal who put the boob back in the boob tube. Say, unpleasant dreams.